Welcome. Thank you for spending some of your time with us. My name is Tina Rosenquist, and this is Knowledge for Wellness. And this show is to better inform you, because when you know more, you are empowered to make better decisions for yourself and your loved ones for a better quality of life. And knowledge is power. And today's topic is on a new technology for hearing aids. And I am delighted to present Matt Mattis from the Hearing Shops of Minnesota. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. I'm so delighted that you could join us on Knowledge for Wellness. It's great to be here. Yes, and you can educate my viewers on this new technology. We hope to. Yes. But this is your first time on Knowledge for Wellness. That it is, yeah. Yes. So I'd like for you to tell my viewers about yourself, your love and your passion, and why you decided to go into this profession. Sure. Um, I've been in the hearing aid business now for over 10 years. Okay. Um, and both on the manufacturing side and now on the, the audiology or clinician side. Okay. Um, and it's, it's a big problem in the United States. There are over 38 million people in the United States suffering from hearing loss. Okay. And uh, I've seen the results of what can happen when people actually get help. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've taken that and we started the hearing shops of Minnesota mm -hmm. and we've got four locations around town um, that are clinics to provide help for those people with hearing loss. Right. And so it, uh, that's, that's what we're doing with this. Okay, and you're now the president of the Hearing Shops of Minnesota. I am. I'm the president uh, of it. We started uh, the company uh, about three and a half years ago mm -hmm. um, with, one, with one location in Richfield, and, and now we've grown that to, to four and uh, have thousands of happy patients who are referring their friends and family to us now. Yes, I can see. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you have a loved one and you're concerned about them and they distance themselves a little bit mm -hmm. from the family, you know, sure sign is the possibility of a hearing loss or they constantly are asking you what or you know having you do that yes yeah so in your professional opinion then you know what are some of the signs of a hearing loss then well there's there's many signs mm -hmm. and and unfortunately it's usually the family members or the loved ones who realize somebody's having the hearing loss before the person who actually is. Mm -hmm. The TV starts to get louder. Oh. Um, you, you, the, the person starts to say what and ha huh more often. Yes. Um, they don't like to go out to their favorite restaurants anymore because now conversation is difficult in background noise. Mm -hmm. um, those are very common signs. and. It happens gradually over time. The hearing loss does. Sure. So it's usually the loved ones and family members who kind of see it first and say, what's going on with your hearing mm -hmm. before the person who actually has the hearing loss? Sure. Because it happens to them so gradually on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. yes. But what we always say, how do you know what you're missing if you can't hear what you're missing? <laughs> Others can hear that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's why we see it that way. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's say a situation that we're talking about, you just talked about mm -hmm. in a restaurant or setting, or even when you go out to listen to a band, then you can't converse anymore because the actual band you can hear better than that person's volume. Sure. So any particular situations? Are? Well, <clears throat> the people with hearing loss have the most trouble when there's background noise present or competing sounds. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because a lot of people, when they first start to notice the hearing loss, they have a high frequency hearing loss. And so they're missing out on those frequencies. If you think about frequencies, um, you think about a piano. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's the bass sounds on the left-hand side of the piano, the mid-range sounds in the center, and the treble sounds are on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. It's those treble sounds that create clarity mm -hmm. in music and also in speech. And unfortunately, that's what we lose first with hearing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we get people who come in all the times, and they don't tell us, I can't hear. They mm -hmm. say, I can hear. I just don't always understand. Okay. And it's because we're missing those frequencies where the clarity of speech is. Mm -hmm. Now, if you add noise in, like a restaurant or a concert or so forth, now you've got all this other competing noise going on, and you can't hear the frequencies which create that clarity of speech you're lost. Yes. Uh, and you miss out on enough, and all of a sudden now you can't have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to eliminate. We want to avoid that, that withdrawal of people just saying, I'm just not going to do this anymore because mm -hmm. it's not worth it. Yeah. Or even the embarrassment of it as well. Exactly. You know. And so I want to touch about, uh, you know, normally this is something that we always see as we age. Mm -hmm. But there's also been let's say some of the children who have had hearing loss because they had to have tubes put in their ears. 
So I would think that it would be a wide range of ages. Or is there someone it, specifically that it affects? Well, it is. Uh, the, the, the people think that hearing loss is a old person's issue. Mm -hmm. and, and we're seeing people younger and younger now oh. because of lifestyle, number one. Mm -hmm. um, also because of uh, the, the situations that they've been put in, whether it be at work or, or other situations where noise has created hearing loss for them. Mm -hmm. uh, in children, it's usually uh, at birth mm. um, or infections. Mm -hmm. Now we've seen that actually go down a little bit because medicine's gotten so much better. Yes. Um, but uh, sensory neural hearing loss, which is nerve loss, okay. uh, which is what is most common, about 95% mm -hmm. of all hearing losses are sensory neural losses are created by aging mm -hmm. and by noise exposure for the most part. Sure. So as we get older and mm -hmm. as the, the iPod generation and the Harley Davidson generation mm -hmm. um, gets older, sure. all those things that were fun when we were younger are now creating this problem as we get older. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's a widespread problem. It's still mainly in people over the age of 50, but it's changing. Yes. And I know a lot of the companies are also being a little bit proactive and trying to protect the, their hearing. And they've come up with some good devices to cover the ears to protect them as sure. well. Sure. OSHA, you know, OSHA has standards now. So, mm -hmm. you know, factory workers uh, in, you know, back in the olden days where there was no hearing protection, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, going to work every day did significant damage to their hearing. Sure. Um, now with the OSHA standards, most of the factories have hearing protection programs. Um, but we've just created new ways to have hearing loss with the iPods and oh. the, the car stereos that shake the ground mm -hmm. and everything else. So um, hearing loss is not shrinking. It's actually growing. Um, there's approximately 36 to 38 million people in the United States with it right now. Oh. That's up from 32 million just a few years ago. Mm. And you would think with everything, with new technology, that we'd be a little bit more preventative or more aware of you know, the situations we put ourselves in. You would think so. Yeah. So let's say someone is in a cer certain situation and um, if they come to you because they're not sure if they have a hearing loss, mm -hmm. you know, how would you then proceed or treat them? Sure. We, um, we encourage everybody to come for a hearing test, especially sure. if they're over the age of 50. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's a pretty simple thing. You know, we, we use an isolated sound booth. Mm -hmm. We do uh, basically a four-stage test. So we do, tone, we do tones and frequencies. We mm -hmm. want to know exactly which frequencies they can still hear sure. and at which decibel level. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to make sure kind of how loud do we turn it up before you hear it in the specific frequency. Sure. That's one of the tests. The other thing that we do is we do speech comprehension, basically. Okay. Uh, we read a list of words. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that when we have the volume level at a, a level we know they can hear in each frequency, mm -hmm. that they can actually understand the words that are being spoken. Sure. Because what happens in prolonged hearing loss mm -hmm. is the longer the brain goes without hearing those sounds, the more it becomes used to not hearing those sounds, and then it can't recognize them. Oh. So we want to make sure that we can give the volume. That's mm -hmm. not an issue. Right. But when we give the volume with the hearing aids, we want to make sure the brain can comprehend the sounds and clarify the speech. Okay. And so we do testing for that to make sure, too. And that's called discrimination testing. Mm. Um, but those are some of the things that we would do. And it takes about 30 to 45 minutes. Wow. So you're saying, basically, when you talk with someone and they've gone for, let's say, 10 years, mm -hmm. then the brain shuts that off. The, the brain, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of like uh, if you break your arm and your mm -hmm. arm is in a cast. Mm -hmm. You know, if your arm's in a cast for six weeks, when the cast comes off, that arm is much smaller than the other arm because your muscles haven't been used. They mm -hmm. just, they, they, they get smaller and now you can rebuild that muscle again. Mm -hmm. um, but the longer you go, the harder it is to rebuild that muscle. Okay. It's kind of the same thing with hearing loss mm -hmm. is, is, once the hearing loss is there, there's no getting it back. We cannot fix broken ears. Right. Um, but by giving the sound back, we can try to start retraining the brain to hear those sounds again. And sometimes we can get better scores once we put hearing aids on people. Okay. But we don't want them to wait too long because then it gets much, much harder to do that. Okay.